in the mystical realm of Elysian, under the pastel hues of the twilight sky, the three sisters stood united in solemnity. The ancient tree of memories, which had stood tall and witnessed countless seasons of their lives, countless ages of the world before, had withered away, its once vibrant leaves now scattered around its base. Lara, the middle child, was always the pillar of strength for her siblings. Today, however, her adventurous spirit was weighed down by the sight before them. Ilara, the eldest, had sung of the tree's legends for the whole of her life. Her soul resonated with its memories of olden days. The declining tree imparted a melancholic lullaby on her lips. She wrapped an arm around Lara, offering comfort and intoning words of remembrance. Callista, the youngest, felt the tree's pain deeply. Known for her affinity with the land, she knelt, touching the tree's ancient bark and feeling and seeing its stories, its joys, and its sorrows. She lived a new story with each touch of the pieces of the tree's shattered whole. The sisters comforted one another. They stood, bound by their love and a shared grief for the magnitude of loss this was not just for them but for everyone. While the physical form of the Tree of Memories had succumbed, they pledged to keep its essence alive. By telling its tales, singing its songs, and sharing its visions, the spirit of the tree would persist. If the tree could no longer remember for Elysian, then they would remember in place of the tree that the world may never forget. As days turned to nights and seasons shifted, the three sisters became inseparable from the essence of Elysian. Lara recited the many tales of history to the pilgrims that came to find the knowledge of the tree. Ilara sang the songs of Elysian to their visitors and to the land itself lest it forget what is be of Elysian. Callista read the memories of plants and trees, land and even once, a bottle of the sea filled with water, sand, and tiny life. She shared her visions with whomever was listening. She swiftly learned the magical arts to have a steady scribing spell recording these visions for posterity. There were just so many wonderful stories that should be preserved that the girl's work was endless, as were the crowds that gathered to hear all the three might share with them. They never wavered in their devotion to their cause. The land, in return for their dedication, cared for them. It started with food, clothing, and shelter. Later it began to whisper ancient secrets and stories to them, filling in gaps in their own memories. The winds carried tales of today, adding new memories to the ones the girls guarded. The rivers sang lullabies of civilizations, heroes, and battles past. Even the tiniest pebbles had stories to tell and they were brought to them from far and wide. Recognizing their devotion, the king of Elysian, in a grand mystical event, chose them to act as celestial guardians. The sisters were transformed into divine deities, each embodying a unique aspect of memory. Lara became the goddess of courageous tales, adopting flame-red attire to symbolize the brave adventures of heroes past. Ilara turned into the goddess of ancient songs, her voice echoing the melodies of time. Rainbow colors radiated from her as she ascended reflecting the multitude of emotions a song can convey. Callista, Adorned in earthy green with vine-wrapped stones as nature's form of jewelry, transformed into the goddess of nature's whispers, her touch bringing life to every memory that slumbered in the land. Together, they became the beating heart of Elysian, guiding its inhabitants and ensuring that no story, no matter how small or grand, would ever be forgotten. They stood as eternal sentinels, a testament to the enduring power of memories, stories, of sisterhood and familial devotion.